This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, how are you? Yeah, well, it's time now for the ramble. And here I am. I'm Alex Bennett. And uh, let's see. Over there, okay, uh, is, oh, well, I have to go, I have to cut to you first. There we go. There we go. I have to turn your mic on, That's too. true. That's you know. true also. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I have. I out there. Yeah. And then I also have a uh, split screenshot of both of us. There we things. go. So, <clears throat> almost didn't do a show tonight. Well, that's what you've been saying. And I may not do a whole show tonight. See, I I just go with the flow, Alex. Uh, it's been a day of going to doctors. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what do you mean? No. What do you mean? This is the update. Right? This is the update. Well, it's an update. I, You know, last night I did a show. Last uh, time when, when Gabnet was on live, I was walking around with 102 fever and I got on the program and did a show without collapsing. When was that? That was last week. No. And now you're here you are. Here I am. Here he is. No, I know I what do you what do you say? I don't understand what you're referring to. I'm just kidding. Oh. No, I He's not, definitely sick. Uh, no, definitely. I'm officially sick now. What? No. Nothing. What do you mean? I went I, Okay, well, first of all, this morning I wake up, and I've had this uh, for years, maybe as far back as I can remember. I've had a couple of loose teeth, one of which finally one day, but stop it. What? I'm telling a story. <laughs> you know, it's hard enough doing this tonight. Okay, go without, ahead. Without that kind of distraction. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So I, I have had this, uh, I had two loose teeth, one very slightly loose, and, and, and the other one was getting really loose. Eventually, it fell out on its own. Oh, boy, that's it, 700 it was, bucks. They, 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 it saved me like 900 bucks. Yeah. It was called self-extraction. <laughs> and, and they looked to see, was there any other part? There's a little, little piece left in there, and they said, ah, when we drill, <laughs> you know, that'll go away. So anyway... I had, but I had this other loose tooth, and it's been loose for the longest time. And uh, I obsess on it. No shit. Right? <laughs> the, the loose right. tooth is bothering me. The loose tooth is bothering me. Um, please, and, kill me, God. Kill me. But, now, you see, I can't tell a story without you just, you know. Interrupting. I can't help it if you don't have any sympathy for me. I do have sympathy. No, you don't. You keep repeating it no. over no, you and don't. over no, you and don't. over and over again. No, you don't. Yes, you do. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, what I was going to say is, is that I so I have this uh, this uh, uh, this tooth which is is uh, loose. All right. So it starts <laughs> it starts bothering me a little bit. You know, where it's sensitive when I just uh, am. Uh, uh, chewing on it or something like that, uh, where it hadn't been before, and now all of a sudden it's 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 bothering me. Okay, so uh, I I go for a couple of weeks and then it starts bothering me a little more and a little more, and finally this morning I wake up and I go this thing is kind of getting a little gamey. Is this the one you took the uh, pills for? That I took the antibiotics right. for? Yeah, and, and refused to tell the doctors that he did that, which I find very interesting. I don't tell them because they're going to chastise me. Well, yeah, and rightfully so. No, well, anyway, it turns out the antibiotic I took wouldn't help a tooth anyway. Anyway, let me just continue with the story. Please. Because you, you find one thing to obsess on about me. Like, <laughs> no, again, I go. I, I had another doctor's appointment today. She said, did you tell them you took antibiotics? No. I mean, what, what is, you're, you're so obsessed on that. You're because not you don't lie to doctors. And you lied by omission. Oh. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> I brought you on here to make my sh my job easier. Hi. Yeah. Well, you, you aren't. Okay. All right. Well, so, you only have like um, twenty minutes. What? <laughs> so anyway, uh, I uh, uh, so I had this loose tooth, so it it started really bothering me, and I'm thinking, 
it's going to have to be pulled. It's going to have to be yanked because eventually we th always thought this tooth would have to go, right? So finally, I couldn't figure out which dentist to go to, the new one you have who doesn't know about this tooth or to the person who knows about this tooth. Rosemary. So I went to her. And uh, she looks at it and she goes, well, first of all, she says, I don't know. She says, maybe total bone loss in there, which means you can't even have an implant. And she says, let me take an x-ray on it. She x-rays the tooth. She then compares it to an x-ray of the same tooth in 2012, which is what, five years ago? Mm -hmm. No change. That's great. No change in bone or whatever. She says. No bone loss. I said, and then I talked about, well, should we pull it or whatever? She, oh, no, I wouldn't pull it at this point. She says, it's not, it's not at that stage. She says, but what you've got is you have a pocket under the gum in which it's gotten infected from food getting jammed up there and everything. So what I'm going to do is clean it out, and then we're going to put in some medicine, some antibiotic, and then the whole thing will heal itself by bringing the connective tissue together. So that's what she did. I didn't Good. have to. I didn't have to uh, have a tooth pull. Good. It wasn't anything like that, Good. and it and it hurts a lot now because she went in there and dug around. And well, was, she had to. I was bleeding yeah. like a stuck pig, but I mean, it it was good. Okay, that's number one. Said so I'm going home. I I have not been feeling well this week. Well, he's been sick. I've been sick. Yeah. Now I was really sick on. I think my sickest day was. Sunday, maybe Monday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It started Saturday night. Sunday, Monday. Okay, Monday, I didn't know where I was. I was. Oh, yeah, he was like in La La Land. I was Land. in La La Land. Uh, so I, um, I went and uh, um, th then the next day, it kind of got better. Uh, I had decided not to do a show. And then the next day, I decided, well, let's have... Let's have uh, 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 Jack Bishop do the show. He and Amy do mm -hmm. the show. Uh, I'll take another night off just to get better. And then I went and did the show last night. This morning I wake up and I go, I can't do a show tonight. I mean, I was just, besides the tooth thing, I was just really out of it. Just besides myself and look where he is now. No, no, I'm, I'm barely here. You're doing good. I'm barely here. You're anyway. doing good. So uh, uh, it kind of came back, mm -hmm. but it, it, I, I, I just said to myself, look, you know, there's something going on here that I don't completely understand because uh, I'm, I'm still feeling sick and I should be getting better, all right? So I decided, I, I don't want to go to my, my uh, what do you call it? Internist. In, internist. No, the first step is always... Uh, well, the reason I don't go to the internist is not that I don't like <laughs> him, although I could like him better. Uh, but it's not that I don't like him. It's just that if you make an appointment, it might be two days from now. Uh, when you see him, uh, he has so many patients, he doesn't know what to do. So I, I learned one other time that if I go to City MD, which is one it's of these... It's a walk, walk on. Urgent care clinic. Yeah, it's a call. walk off the street, no appointment. Yeah, no. and you move fast. Oh, oh, well, really? not not in Harlem. Oh, really? Not where you went. The, 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 not really. On Eighty Sixth Street. Wait, well, you don't know that Eighty Sixth Street doesn't suck these days. Alex, I've been there maybe a half a dozen times in the last few years. Yeah, but it, it, these are good places to go. It's if, your first. It's your first door. Yeah. Of 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 helping. Yeah. Like when I broke my my wrist, it was on a Friday and it was like late in the afternoon. There was no one around, so I went to them. They x-rayed it. He said, yeah, it's broken. He put a, a temporary cast on, just enough to get me through till yeah. my orthopedic surgeon was in the office. Yeah. So they serve that purpose. Right. You know. But anyway, so so uh, there's one on, on 125th Street, and I figured I went to the one on 86, so they probably have all my information. I was wrong. They didn't. <laughs> you had to fill it out again? Yeah, I had to uh, fill out. It's only one page you have to fill out. But anyway, fill, but I... Uh, so I went up to 125th. This is right smack dab in the middle of Harlem, you know. Uh, and uh, I go in, and uh, they say, well, it'll be about a, a 30 to 40 minute wait. I went, oh, okay, well, you know, what the hell? I, what, am I, what have I well, got to do? Well, with, yeah, what else? What else have I got to do with my miserable life? So about uh, 25 <laughs> minutes in, I, they say, Mr. Schwarzman, and I say, yeah. And they say, come with us. And the guy takes my blood pressure and does the whole thing and blah, 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 blah. And uh, then says, the doctor will be in shortly. 
10 minutes go by. Oh, you're talking about being in there. I thought you were talking about being out no. in the little room. No, I'm in, oh. the, I'm in the little room. You're, you're in the examination. Now it's 15 minutes. <laughs> now it's 20 minutes. Now I decide I better go and ask somebody. So I go out to the, uh, the nurse's uh, uh, station. station. And uh, I say, hey, you know, I'm, I've been in there for 20 minutes. Well, the doctor's still busy with other patients who come before you. I go, okay. So I go back in. It's now 25 minutes. It's now 30 minutes. It's now 35 minutes. I go back in. I say, am I going to be seeing a doctor anytime soon? And they said, oh, about another 10 minutes. I'm beginning to suddenly realize why you don't want to go to City MD. No, that's not the reason. <laughs> Poor people tend to use that as because they're getting off of emergency rooms in the hospital, they tend to go to those. So I would imagine there'd be more people that are using it as their first, you know, as a regular doctor kind of thing. Well, I, I don't know that that was the they case. They take Medicare. But all I know is, okay, if you're not going to see me immediately, then why me. keep me in a small... So at one point yeah. I said, do you mind if I go back out to the lobby and wait? And they said, oh no, stay in that uh, room. Did you have a little gown on? No, I didn't have a um, gown on or anything. And I'm getting an attitude. I got to say this. I got to be honest about it. I'm the only white person in the place. Literally the only, the, every patient, every person working there, all black. Mm -hmm. And I'm beginning to feel they don't like white people too much. I mean, I'm getting that vibe. I mean, is that racist to me? No, I don't think so. It's, I'm just, I'm, it's racist to them, actually. But it, I'm getting that vibe, you know, that I'm... I'm kind of being like, oh, well, there's a white guy, complaining guy. And you're the minority. Yeah, the, the white complaining guy. <laughs> and The white complaining Jewish guy. You know, I mean, I don't mind that you've got other patients, but don't bring me into this little room and keep me there <laughs> like it's a cell sitting in this chair with paper on it, you know. I, and I just, every time I went out there and I, I bitched a little bit, I, it's like I got attitude from it, <laughs> right. you know. Well, finally, I, uh, somebody finally decides they're going to take some more information on me. Okay, what pills do you take? What do you, couldn't remember any of the medicine I take because my mind has just been totally turned into mush. mush. And uh, finally, the doctor comes in. Again, she's black. I'm not saying that because she's black. I'm saying that because I'm the only white person, so I'm trying to point this out. And she was very good. I mean, she, you know, she said, oh, it looks like you have a, it looks like you probably have a little bit of a bacterial infection or something from the cold that you had and there's something sticking on. So we're going to prescribe this to you. And then she prescribed me prednisone and a very heavy uh, antibiotic that I take for about five days. Okay. Uh, the, in the four days. And, uh, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, inhalator. In, 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 inhaler. Inhaler. In a, in a later in, in a later in no, a later. inhaler and I just, so I took the inhaler you know got so I went down and got all that stuff and I'm just hoping it'll start working it hasn't started <coughs> <coughs> it hasn't started working yet you should turn your out your face when you I'm sneeze. doing a radio show I have to look at a camera but I got your spittle well then just wait, come in here with like a face guard I, don't <laughs> I know. think I will well, we got 21 minutes. Huh? 11 minutes. 11 minutes? Uh -huh. Something like that. Just yeah. saying. I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. So. Are you hot? Uh -huh. Are you? No, I'm comfortable. Well, you know, I'm the one. I was running a temperature today a little well, bit. That's I asked you. Are you hot? And, uh, but anyway, I, I, you know, so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to do this show, and I hope I can make it till midnight. If I don't, I'll, you know, if I can't feel it, bet, if you I'm can't, just gonna, you can't. I'll just call the show short. Exactly. You know, it's going to be a feel free night, so feel free to call. Yeah, he always makes a big deal out that. Out I think that. he likes saying feel free. No, but like we care. <laughs> we do. What? There's a feel free night? No, I'm actually. I always look forward to it. Yeah, I did too. Because, uh, um, like last night, I suddenly realized fifty percent of the show is him talking. <laughs> You know, and uh, while I appreciate his opinion, no, I don't. 
uh, I'd like to let other people well, feel. Call, call them more people. Huh? Call them. Well, more I, people. I do that. I attempt to bring them out. But yeah, you have to interrupt him more often. But you know, it's interesting that when Phil is in here, uh, Jeff talks a lot more. <laughs> but when Phil is here, he kind of feels inhibited. I think. Maybe. Not that that could anyway, be. nauseous tonight too. All right, ten and minutes. And I've got the, all this medicine in me now. And, and let's hope it clears it up because you know it, it's. I know you know. I know when I've got something wrong with me, I just can't put my finger on it. And I knew it was something that it wasn't like that wasn't going away. You were sick. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and and so far as the tooth was concerned, there was something wrong there. I just couldn't figure out what it was. You know, but it was better news than I thought it was. Good. You know. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time talking, too. I want you to call tonight. And the reason I want you Please. to call, not yet, uh, is that I'm going to have to lay back and just watch you guys do the show. Right? Right. Yeah. Let the call-ins handle it. Mm -hmm. So I need you to be like, be there for me tonight. Yes. Can uh, I roll over? Not yet. It's oh. not even close to time yet. Oh, nine minutes. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, let me see here. What's happening in the news? Is, uh, did you did you see uh, Trump today? Yeah, he called he called him a liar. <laughs> he said, "Then I'll come I'll come and, and talk to the to the judiciary committee." Well, he trotted out his his lawyer. Yeah, who was totally got it all wrong. Huh? He got it all wrong on a lot of facts. He totally got it all wrong. Excuse me, I have to blow my nose. Hold on. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing that for? It's the wind. Uh, oh, oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I'll turn off the fan then. <laughs> uh, uh. What's that? That's after how many days have I? You know, and I thought it went away. What you don't seem to understand is, as you get older, it takes longer to heal, and you just have to accept it's that. Heal. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, anyway, so... Uh, uh, so there. Yeah, so anyway, it's, uh, you know... Um, well, welcome back to reality. Well, okay, yeah, but anyway, so today was uh, the day that Trump reacted to Comey. You know, you're the president of the United States. <laughs> uh, you should have a little more dignity. <laughs> I mean, he what his lawyer was saying was, we're thinking of suing Comey. <laughs> well, I got news for you. Uh, he can't sue Comey. Do you, do you know that? No. He can't sue him. Why? Why, why can't he sue him? Because and you, most nobody makes a big deal out of this. I don't. He, I don't hear this on MSNBC. I tell don't us, hear this on Fox us. or any place like that. But it was one of the first lessons I learned. Tell us in in talk radio about certain people being able to sue you for saying something. Uh -huh. I can say anything I want to about Donald Trump, <clears throat> and because I am a private citizen. He can't sue me. On the other hand, he can say anything he wants to about me, and I can't sue him. So Comey is kind of protected. Well, he, he's now a private citizen. Yeah. And to say, well, we're going to sue, we're going to do this, and and he's claiming he has the tapes, tapes but th they said, when can we expect to see them? Well, don't expect it. Well, do you know what Comey said? Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, no, he is. He doesn't Let have. He, he doesn't have the tapes. He has us. no tapes. He's he a, has, he has a no virtual tapes. liar, and he believes his lies. No, but he's like a, he's like a baby. He's like a spoiled child picking a fight with another with a with another child. Well, I'm going to sue you. You know, I'm going to take you to court. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to. They do say that. all he does is watch television. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, 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 it was, it is uh, ridiculous to a fault, oh, the it's way right. he's treating this. What he should do is say, if Comey wants to have his little day over there, at Cap uh, let him have it. I'm not going to say anything. Just get on with your, what you're doing, you know. Trump didn't do any tweets. He, originally, he said he was going to tweet while Comey was talking, so yeah. it would be like live response. Yeah. But their lawyer, his lawyer, I'm sure made him like, Tied, well, tied his here's, hands. here's the thing. Today he said, and I quote, uh, I'm willing to get go before the Congressional Committee, committee. Uh, uh, under oath and, and talk to this matter. 
It's never going to happen. Of course not. You know why it's never going to happen? He's guilty because the, forever. Well, no. So many things. <clears throat> the minute he goes and takes an oath, the minute he lies yeah. or is caught in a lie. You got Clinton again. You, you, now you're talking impeachment. Well, that's what happened to Clinton. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to Clinton on something that certainly wasn't hurting any of us. Right. You know. But uh, it was amazing. It's just amazing. I mean, just the reaction, so childish. Well, he is a child. He's, he's emotionally studded. You know, he's... He, 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 you know. I just find him so disgusting, and he's getting worse. <clears throat> they said no one wants to work for him because it's going to—it's a career ruiner. <laughs> yeah, it's not a career killer. Yeah, yeah. So he can't fill positions except for putting his family in there. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, 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 they're kind of the—you know what they are? That family—they're the anti-Kardashians. <laughs> Am I right? They're like. Everything the Kardashians are, well, everything the Kardashians are, they aren't. The Kardashians do have some kind of class. Yeah, but they're both know. attention getters. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, I mean, wait till Trump's voters realize that everything he wants to do is against them. <laughs> oh, it's going to be terrible for <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah, it's going to be horrible for them. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna. I'm actually think it's time for us okay, to uh, it's, uh, to uh, ten twenty six. Yeah. So if you want to amble over I'm here, I'm gonna roll on over. Yeah, just roll on over, and I'm. I've got to move a few things here on the panel thing here. I gotta move this up here, up here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Move the panel up there. Yeah, hold on a second. I'm, I'm just trying to get this all ready for the show we're about to do. Let me get rid of this and uh, put yourself a little more into the into the picture. Okay. Okay. There we go. Uh, let me see here. And I also, what do I have to do now? Uh, I have to uh, bring up the Skype. Not now. And uh, I have to then turn on the Skype. Oh, the, it is online. Oh, son of a bitch. I didn't realize. Call in. Wait a minute. Now we're on. No. Oh, now we're online. Okay. There we go. Now we're online, folks. Okay, and we're waiting for your call. <coughs> Man, I, I am just so full of phlegm. And, yeah, but you're well, look, if you want to leave now, you can. <laughs> I'm going to wait till the first oh, call. You want to wait till the first call? Or, yeah, but then I'm going to cough, and yeah. then you're going to go, oh, you know. You can't catch anything. I read that you can't. Alex. After the first three days of cold, you cannot catch it. So if you haven't gotten my cold, you haven't gotten my cold. You know, you have no sympathy at all. You're terrible. You're really terrible. Okay. Uh, there he what is. There's say? Scott uh, Boddicker, ladies and is. gentlemen. Oh, hello there, hey, Scott. Scott. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Uh, 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 terrible. Uh, you go. Yeah. Uh, Lee. Uh, Lee Presson is calling now as okay. well. Hello, Lee. Uh, turn your, turn, turn your camera on. Is this the line? Yeah, this is the phlegm line. <laughs> hey. Right. This is Flem or Us. Oh, that's fantastic. How yeah. You guys doing? Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Turn it. Turn on your camera, Lee. Is my camera not on? No. Oh, that's too bad. You're missing. You're missing quite a show. All right. Let's <laughs> oh, do that. Really? Oh, okay. Let's do that camera cycle again. And, and Scott is <laughs> still and, waddling around there. Oh, and, and here oh, comes oh, here comes Jeff. Hey. Can Jeff turn on your camera? Let's see if Scott comes up at any time here. You may have Keep to... Keep toggling. Nothing? There you go. Now you're oh. fine. Now you're fine. Now we just have to wait for Jeff to turn on his camera, and we should I'm be fine. I'm fine. I don't know why. I'll go off and uh, There we go. There, there we, we go. go. So that means you have to turn it off and then on again. Hello, boy. Now look, what a handsome-looking crowd. Mustaches and beards. <laughs> I like that. Lee looks like he's dressed to go out. Uh -huh. I yeah. am actually. I've I've got I've got about a half an hour to give you guys, and then I got to run off and do a show. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, tonight I am hosting. Well, normally I I lead a ten piece band. Oh, ten neat. piece swing band, which Alex can tell you about. But Very tonight good. Tonight I am co-hosting a burlesque show with Ooh. my buddies at the Hubba Hubba Review in San Francisco. <laughs> oh wow! Sounds cool. So you got a tuxedo tonight, right? Yes. I can tell that. And here comes Mark Thorner. Hello, Mark. Hey. <clears throat> How are you doing? Oh, 
better than you are right now. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm at, uh, I'm not at death's door, but I'm kind of on the stoop. <laughs> uh, Walking uh, up the sidewalk. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Lee is putting on his, uh, his shoes. shiny patent leather you'll see, shoes. You'll see me getting ready as the day goes on. You know what day. I should do some night, Lee? I still have the last show we ever did at uh, at Live 105. I should uh, play I a little should, bit of your, like, you and your orchestra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I think the... I think the I think the I think, apathy yeah. was catching. It was one time. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. There's a little slap back. So let me turn yeah. it. Yeah. No, no. I'm still having trouble there. Hold on. There we go. There we go. No? No. Wow. Wow. That's, that's bizarre slap back. Okay. Hold on. And we'll leave it down and then we'll bring it up. Now we're fine. Okay. With that, I'm yeah. going to say good night. Good night. Oh. I'm, I'm doing it early right. night. Good she's, night, everyone. she's not going to kiss me because even though I'm sick, she doesn't love me. <laughs> He's sick. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Wave goodbye to her. There we go. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Yeah. I had the group call. Here comes Patrick. Uh, Mark, turn your camera on if you can. Oh, uh, it's playing that game again. Huh? Yeah, it always does. Sometimes it looks, it is on, and then it's, but it's not on here. And uh, Power cycle. You know, yeah, there's Mark. There he is. Hey, always, always in the same position. Suspects. Always in the same position, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, where were we? Oh, so so uh, when I was in high school, yeah, and a little bit of college, yeah. I worked in the city, yeah, in Manhattan, on I think Twenty Eighth Street, and I made shirts. Yeah, and I was in a shirt factory, and one of the things that we made, we made fancy shirts, shirts, but we made tuxedo shirts too. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, my, my all about that. when I was growing up, my father was a musician. <clears throat> and I, one of my fondest memories always is my father putting on, like Lee is right now, his tuxedo with mm -hmm. the, uh, tu you know, the tuxedo shirt and the whole thing and the bow tie. He used to have a bow tie. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, putting the, vi the violin under his, under his arm and <clears throat> taking off and going to play somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he that but he had like about f four or five tuxedos. Oh. You know. Yeah, about about five years ago, <clears throat> I came up with the idea of putting the entire band in tuxedos for a New Year's Eve show. Nice. And they and then the boys said, "Do we really have to buy tuxedos?" I said, "No, no, no. Just get a black suit, a white shirt, and a bow tie. That'll look like a tuxedo from four feet away." Yeah. Individually, we all look really cheap, but you put us together on a stage. You look classy as balls. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah. So where are you playing tonight? Tonight is just the burlesque show. It's just me. Yeah. But uh, sometimes uh, for big deals, uh, shows yeah. with the nails, we'll get everybody all dressed up <clears throat> in bow ties now, and now, tuxedo wait a minute. shirts. When, when you say, you, get, you know, that you're um, getting all dressed up and everything like that for the burlesque show, this what describe the burlesque show. What is it exactly? Uh, the Hubba Hubba Review, a burlesque troupe that's run by a friend of mine out of San Francisco, California. Yeah. And it's the it's uh, one of the top burlesque shows in the nation. And tonight they're doing uh, it's the all star burlesque out of towner show. All burlesque stars from outside of San Francisco. So now these are women with tassels. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I yes. just wanted to know how, because today yes. tassels isn't naked. You know. Yes, exactly. It's it's burlesque. It's it's tassels and g-strings and boobs. Mark, you know of this organization? Videos? You can't again. Fan, well, for as much as I can be a fan living on the other end of the planet, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, I mean, the closest thing I got to is Mambo's over in South Beach, uh, which is a real Latino nightclub. I mean, yeah. like the Latin Quarter used to be. Yeah. Well, the DNA Lounge does have a live satellite feed if you want to check us out after Alex is off the air. I have before, you know. Yeah. I see. Gee, look what I'm missing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so burlesque. We're, we're this is burlesque with a Q. Yeah. Or with a K, maybe. How about that? Uh, quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It's more than just boobs. Uh, they, they've got. We've got uh, comedy. We've got you know a guy in a gorilla suit because you can't have a burlesque show without a guy in a gorilla suit. <laughs> I, and, uh, listen, I've been to a lot. I when I was a kid, I snuck into burlesque shows. Yeah, I remember comics. 
I remember tasseled women, okay, which actually in those days gave me a hard on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I don't remember a gorilla ever. No, oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, it's with with burlesque. It's not. It's more than just stripping. With stripping, it's the girls come out and go, "Here are my body parts. Enjoy." With burlesque, it's more about presentation. Well, well people don't. Act but uh, and people don't know from stripping today. All they know from is lap dancing. Yeah, exactly. You know? Burlesque is a lot more involved than that. It used to be like a whole art form unto itself. Oh stuff. yeah. Oh yeah. And there used to be some great women working that circuit. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, hello, Patrick. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So I'm doing the show tonight very ill. Yes, you must, we must fill in for him. He can't really speak that well. Well, I... Uh, Pussy. Uh, huh? <laughs> well, uh, what did you, wait, Jason, Jason, what did you say? I, what, did I say You something? have all the sympathy of my wife. <laughs> I mean... You sound fine. You sound a lot better. Oh, I'm worse than I was yesterday. Oh, your voice sounds good. Yeah, that's why I went to the doctor today. Why I went to this clinic... This walk-in clinic. And you tried to give everybody a seizure by, like, playing a one-second clip or something? Uh, what do you mean? What? what? Uh, I said Alex Bennett was live, and, like, he clipped on this video. Oh, and yeah, it, like, yeah, just shows yeah, us yeah. chairs. Like, yeah. blink, 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 blink. Uh, oh, is that all the, all the chairs was all that happened? Yeah, yeah that, oh, that's, that's all it. I saw. Could, it could have been that I really had lousy, terrible uh, uh, coverage in that room. Because I did turn the camera towards me and talked for about 10, 20 seconds. <laughs> you know, and I was just saying, I'm stuck here in this room waiting for the doctor. Fuck city MD, you know. I, I thought you were trying to find out who has uh, epilepsy. <laughs> no, wait, what was it, flashing? Yeah, it was like a strobe light, like of a chair, because it was like one second, it was like flash, 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 flash. Well, fuck him, you know. <laughs> But anyway, so where was I? Oh yeah, I don't know where. What? Where was I, folks? We're, we're, we were. I, I'm guessing you're in a Nyquil soaked haze at this point. No, I I have done Nyquil. Oh, I, okay. My problem is, I mean, I've literally had uh, been uh, somewhat in a stupor, uh, and the, she told me the doctor said, well, that could be because the sinuses are like got something going up there. So, what I love about City MD is you always walk away with a lot of like antibiotics and steroids and I, I have a I have an inhaler that was the most expensive thing I had to get uh, and uh, so I uh, I have all these drugs to take and hopefully once they catch on I'll start getting better and better but you know I knew that there was something in me that just wasn't going to go away you know my my medicine of choice I don't mean to give somebody a plug or anything but Mucinex D, the stuff that you have to get behind the pharmacy counter. Anytime yeah. I get sick, man, I, I just pop that stuff. That's and, very expensive, right? though, isn't it? It's, you know, it's 40 bucks or something for, like, a good amount of pills, but, you know, it's worth it. it you know, it makes you feel it, better. And the Mucinex does clear you out a little bit. Oh, man, the, yeah, it's, it's great. I she love said, it. do you want cough syrup? And I thought, no, I don't need cough syrup because we have cough syrup with codeine here at the house. And then I thought, well, then I, you're I, sad. I better That's not. You're I fuzzy. better not tell girlfriend. I said, no, I don't need it because she said, why didn't you get some? We need more for the cabinet, you know. Uh, so, but I did. So I didn't get anything for coughing, you know. But uh, anyway, you know, it's, it's just uh, it. it I, I don't know how I got this cold. I understand <clears throat> you get it from people. You and, gotta leave the apartment. And I, I, I hadn't left the apartment in, in 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 a good amount of time, so I don't know where I caught it. You know. Oh, okay. Maybe in the aisle at uh, at Costco or something from somebody who was walking by. You know. Girlfriend was a carrier. It was something that she already had. She gave. She could have brought something in from the office. You know, who knows? She keeps all the windows open. Something could have flown in through the window. Maybe some Chinese person gave it If to I you. can smell food being cooked on the first level of, of eight floors down, I'm sure germs can get up here. <laughs> if squirrels can climb the side of the building, <clears throat> I'm sure that it can get up here. But anyway. 
So, uh, 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 let's see here. Where do we where do we go from here tonight? Gee, Rob isn't calling tonight. Yeah. He he was going to be my go to person for keeping this thing alive. Oh jeez. Uh, oh well, you know. We'll go to Jeff. He'll keep us alive. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll, no, I'll turn it over to you, Scott. No, no, I don't talk. Oh, I see. <laughs> Jason can do it. He's funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, what? What? I had, you, had uh, too much to drink. I didn't think you were going to be on tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, I didn't think I was going to be on either. Uh, I'm feeling slightly. Be- I'm feeling slightly better because I know kind of what this is. Okay, I know that it isn't anything serious, but I'm glad I went to a doctor and got some medicine because that's the only way to get rid of it. You know. Because that's what a hypochondriac loves is medicine. No, you know something? I'm I'm not a big pill popper, to be very honest with you. Yeah. You know? uh, but, I mean, anytime anybody wants to give me an antibiotic, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> it's the line. There's a, there's a Woody Allen line that I switched around a bit that said, I once broke up with a woman over religious differences because she was a Christian scientist and I was a hypochondriac. <laughs> What is in the box? What's what, what do you uh-huh. get? It's well, an unboxing. Part, this is part of what makes it a burlesque show. I see. It's not only a not only a, a tuxedo, Ooh, but we also gotta oh. wear this sucker. Oh, oh wow! Ooh. Oh, that's that is. Yeah. What a topper. So that's a burlesque show for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pretty expensive profession for you. You gotta buy oh, all yeah these, all the With clothes the, and. You when know. you've been in the when you've been in the biz as long as we have, you rack up a few assets. Yeah, I guess. I guess. So anyway, uh, uh, today the uh, the president uh, replied to James Comey. Did anybody it, hear that? in a manner in a manner that was entirely predictable? But more than that, it was just completely. Ch- com- it's like childish. Yeah. What do you expect from him? I expect that he act presidential. He I, lied, but I was vindicated. I was vindicated through his lies. How was he vindicated? What? Because he's a leaker. He was no. leaking lies. He, a lying, you know? a, a, leak, a lying leaker, liker. He, he said that I wasn't being investigated, and he's a leaker. Yeah. I was vindicated. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Did you hear any of it, Mark? No, not really. But I, you know, it's like you read the news feeds and. It's just a headache, really. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, what's going to happen? Because it's a stacked deck. Yeah. Um, we, really, we really are going to have to wait until the midterm elections to do something. Yep. Yeah, yeah we can't do anything about it. You know, even if, uh, even if he has, like, the ultimate smoking gun evidence that would... You know, gee, maybe we should do something. You know, the Senate should, you know, act or Congress should act on it. They're yeah. going to hem and haw it. You know, and the, our you only know, hope is that enough Republicans will go. Maybe we hitched our wagon to the wrong horse. <laughs> He's stupid to know that. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, his base. I mean, to begin with, a base. Do you call what he has a base? Uh, mm. His base, I don't think, is going to be too happy once all is said and done. Yeah, even Nixon had defenders up to a certain point. What, what do you mean? I don't have any medical coverage at all? Where, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Damn Obama? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He got rid of Obamacare, but where's my medicine? Where's my medicine? You know, there's nothing here for poor people. There's nothing here for even middle class people. There's nothing here for human beings. You know, so. Eh. Uh, well, good yeah. night, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. No, it's like, it's, it's this mad cash grab, and once they get it, they're gone. You know, it's it's worse, you know, worse than robber barons. Really. You, you really think that's what it's about, is him getting, yes. getting the money? Short-term yeah. gains. Huh? Yeah. They have a, short-term gains? Yeah. They've been playing the short-term gains game for about 30 years now wow i i just think that uh it's it's just embarrassing it's just embarrassing it is you know and uh, jeff as an older citizen 
How do you feel about this? I mean, do you, do you, how do you, do you, are you avoiding it or trying to avoid it? No, I turn, turn on your mic. Your mic isn't on. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Here I am. Yeah, there you are. Um, I mean, the guy is an embarrassment. Uh, I, I've had some good presidents and some mediocre presidents and terrible ones and, you know, Nixon and this and that. Um, but this guy is really, he's the wrong guy for the job. I'll say it that way. And, uh, you know, he's been a real hustler guy with working around uh, New York and, and and making deals, going broke. Remember, he's gone broke several times. Yeah, quite a few times. And, right. And, I, and, you know, he doesn't like to tell anybody about right. that. Right. But, right. But uh, he's not exactly a success all the time. And, uh, you know, he was pretty lucky that uh, his father gave him a million dollars to start. Yeah. His own little business. It's a nice little deal. I didn't. I never got that. It was probably to get him out of the house. Uh, yeah. My father got me a tuxedo, I think, or something like that once instead. You know, that was about a, a sh nice shirt. Um, but he's really an embarrassment. And, and I know a bunch of the Republicans think he's wonderful because uh, because he's nasty to Obama and and anybody else and Clinton and whatever. Yeah. But and I, yeah, it's it's just it's going to be real tough to get this guy out of here. I don't think that's going to happen. I hate to tell you. It was probably easier to get rid of prohibition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Jason. Yeah, I always thought it was funny when Obama became the president. You know, there would always be those pictures of George W. Like, this, miss me yet? But now yeah. I really think it's funny when they come out with those. It's like, you thought Bush was bad. You know? It's funny because it's sad. It's just like every Republican they put out is just worse and worse than in, the last in, one. In my lifetime, I have known of pr presidents who you thought was the worst thing that could ever happen to this country. First yeah, time right. first time I ever remember that was uh I think it was Richard Nixon. Okay? Yeah. And yet by comparison, Nixon was a saint. You know, and Nixon did his job. You know, and Nixon wasn't an embarrassment when it came to saying stuff. You maybe didn't like the guy. Am I right, Mark? Am I yeah. you know but, but you, you know, there's something else. He also had respect for the office. Yeah. Well, he was vice president before. Yeah, so that's he, the other he, thing. He had he some training. He was a politician, you know. <clears throat> and, he, and he was a, let's see, if I remember, he was a senator and a congressman from California first. Um, and his trainer was the general. I'm trying to think of his name, who was the president before him. Uh, right. uh, Eisenhower. Eisenhower, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, everybody kind of said Eisenhower was kind of a lazy golf playing. Yeah, I mean, I, but when, I, when I was growing up, uh, you know, my, uh, my father was the guy who formed my political attitudes. Uh, mm -hmm. And yet he didn't have much bad to say about Eisenhower. It was like, not at all. Hey, he's not a great president, but he's a nice enough <clears throat> guy. I mean, that was pretty much the, the, the pitch mm -hmm. on, on, uh, on him. Uh, How about the president before him? Truman. Uh, Truman. 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 There was a lot of positive and, and negatives on him. I think there was a lot of politics. Yeah, well, there was, they, you know what it turned out to be? He turned out to be a better president than anybody expected he would be. In other words, he was a case of lowered expectations. Yeah. And so he, he wasn't a great president, but he was certainly better than anybody expected him to be. And, and look what he did. He had to take over... From the biggest act in political show business, That's right. Roosevelt. You know, I have memories of him <laughs> interviewed on radio. Um, you know, he was very good for radio. Very good to get a, a news bite from who? I, uh, Roosevelt? No, oh, uh, uh, Truman. Truman. Yeah. Truman. I mean, taking his walks. You know, in the morning they would ask him. You know, for an opinion, usually about Nixon. And boy, he never, he did not hold back. Yeah. He, he did not hold back. Yeah. Uh, but uh, all I'm saying is these were, uh, in the case of Eisenhower, I liked Eisenhower. He was okay. 
But, you know, Nixon was, uh, was somebody we really hated. Yeah. You know, and this is the worst thing that's ever happened to America. Well, by today's standards, he was pretty damn fucking good. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, miss me now. There should be a picture of, of Nixon. <laughs> you know, a lot of the things yeah. that Nixon did were very well done and, and, and accepted. He was the only guy who could open up a, a, a talks with China, yeah. because he was so he was far enough to the right that the right wingers said, "Well, if he's doing it, it must be okay." You know, uh, and yeah, but where would we be if he did open up talks with China? Maybe we'd still be making products in America. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think somewhere along the line, China would have come to the table. Okay. Because China saw that they want see China's smart enough to know they're living in the you know in in the year two thousand, okay. Uh, the trouble with uh, Trump is he doesn't know that. All <laughs> his answers to solutions are solu answers to solutions as he saw them in the in the nineteen seventies. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, China knew <laughs> one day that well we better become part of the world community because if we don't we're going to be left behind. And that's why they've done so well. So I think that would have happened anyway, Jason. I don't, I, you know, but I think uh, certainly it took a guy like Nixon to be able to open it up because nobody was complaining about Nixon doing it because Nixon wasn't the kind of guy you expect to, to do it. Uh, and then we had Reagan. I thought Reagan was the worst thing we ever had or that we were ever going to have because yeah. he was a lazy president and he was... Uh, Kind of a jingoistic president. I mean, what was your take on him, Mark, when he was around? Well, I was like, oh, wow, we got an actor in the White House. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I was a little, you know, stumped by it. And I wasn't that big a fan. I'll t honestly, I wasn't that big a fan of Carter. But, uh, you know, you go into these things. I wasn't that big a fan of Carter, but you had to admit something about Carter. He was a decent guy. Yeah. You know, he was very weak at what he did, but he was a decent guy. But, I don't know. Going in, going, you know, I went in wide eyed with Reagan. OK, let's see where this. The only thing that was surreal was when Kirch. Um, oh, God, I just blanked. Gorbachev. We just lost when Gar Gorbachev. Uh, thank you. Gorbachev was at the Statue of Liberty. That's when I realized it's over. Yeah. It, I mean, I was like, does this, you know, it was like two things. It was like, you know, I remember turning to a friend of mine going, does this mean the cold, it's done? It's over with? You know, <laughs> that was just like, you know, the same, same thing with the wall, you know, and it, I, I, I think I've said this to you in my lifetime, the couple of things I didn't think, expect to see was a subway series in the Berlin Wall in the fall of communism. Uh -huh. Well, gee, you know, I guess Mission to Mars would be the next thing, you know, yeah, you know, but uh, I that really surprised me. I, I I was really like, well, this is going to change things a bit now, isn't it? Yeah. But well, with this person, I don't see, you know, going into this, I guess because knowing how this jerk did business in New York, yeah. because I saw it firsthand, I tried to warn, you know, I uh, I have friends who I respect that went and it just didn't want Hillary for whatever reason, you know? You know what it is? There's a whole group of people out there, they're, and, and they're stupid Americans. They're unknowledgeable about politics and what it takes to be a politician and so on, who go, at last we have somebody who isn't going to play the game like everybody else. Well, maybe there's a reason why people play the game that way in the first place, because they can get things done. Mm -hmm. You know, and that you get a complete amateur like this. You don't you don't bring a guy in to fix your plumbing who's never who only has worked on electrical. You know, <laughs> you know, you, you bring he was in a salesperson. He was a smooth talker to these people, which I don't understand because I think he talks very unintelligently. I wouldn't I want somebody it. to be my president who I think, holy shit, man, I can't believe how smart that guy is. Not, if, if this not somebody who if this orangutan came <laughs> up to me and tried to sell me something. I don't think I could even begin to consider buying it. But you're what art, art of what deal? Sorry, Patrick, but you're not a conservative. Some of these people, they just, they, it's, 
so simple and they, they want somebody who speaks on but their see, level. But it's very hard. For, this has got to be very hard for you, Patrick, because I know you and I know your beliefs and they're truly decent conservative beliefs. OK, they're rooted in in your own reasonableness, which I admire. And yet you have to live with this guy as the standard bearer for your philosophy. He's the standard bearer for the Republican Party. I'm not a Republican. Well, I'm conservative. Yeah, but <laughs> it, 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 do you vote conservative? No, you vote usually. You have you ever voted Democrat? Yeah, I have. Okay. And remember, in this election, I voted for Mister. I don't know where Aleppo is. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't vote Republican or Democrat. So I voted for Gary Johnson. So I mean. Yeah, I, I've got my standard. Independent thinker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I, I've never shouldered the blame from people that have said to me, well, you voted for him, that's why Trump got in. No, fuck you. No, no, there were too I, many Democrats that stayed home that didn't vote for Hillary. No, but so there, 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 but there, are, there are three million people who more who voted for her than voted for him, and that still didn't get her elected. <laughs> you know, yeah, so so, so what? Point, what does your fucking vote mean? Right. Yeah. Well, don't point the finger at me. So you know, that's what I told. And, and, and uh, we'll go to you in a second, Brian. And, and the other problem is my vote boils down to an electoral college number. Okay, so if I didn't vote, that wouldn't have changed either. <laughs> you know. Yes, Brian. I was just going to ask first a quick comment and then ask a question to Patrick. Uh, comment being, uh, I'm guessing as of right now, still by this time next month, uh, Gabnet will no longer be in existence. Uh, I don't know. No. You know. Anyway, uh, Pat, uh, what I, I don't understand. I don't know if anybody is, knows what he was talking about, but it, it's just because I listened to yesterday's Friday, Sky, I was out. Skype, like Skype light. is forcing us to go to their more uh, their recent system as of July first. And it, 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 I, I can do it. I can do it okay. I can put all you people on and everything. It's just you're going to get used to the fact that when you ring, you get hung up on, but the next thing you know, you're being, it's ringing, and you just pick up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because that's the process I have to go through in order to get you on. Yeah. I know I can do that. I can do that with pretty good mm -hmm. ease. I've done it some nights and gotten used to it, and it, it's entirely the simplest thing in the world to do. Mm -hmm. But... Other people who are on GabNet are not that technically able to do that kind of thing. Now's I've, the time to start teaching. Well, no, well, I, we no out, I I've, already, ask, I've uh, already tried Patrick. to teach some people. I mean, I'm not. Uh, we'll leave Damien out of this because Damien is knows right. how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, we're talking about Jack and Amy. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, we, we when we first had a problem with Skype and we, you know, the, they updated to the new version, I told him how to do it, okay? And he could never get it. I would tune in one night and all of a sudden he's going, oh, no, nobody's there and I can't get this to go here. And I, I told him how to do it, you know? So, you know, we could, we could, we could lose some people along the line and I don't know if I sure. want to go put up with that. You know, let's just <laughs> dump the whole damn project. You know, wanted but, to ask, uh, but I'll, prob I'll probably keep doing it. But you know, uh, last night I was just really pissed at this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask though, uh, Patrick, you voted for a presidential candidate who represents a political ideology, if I'm not mistaken, that would completely gut and, if not dismantle entirely, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Am I right? Uh, no. Libertarian Party. Yeah, but that. That would, I mean, their beliefs and the fact that uh, uh, if he would have gotten in, he would have the same chance of getting anything passed as anyone else. That's not shit I would worry about. I, I was concerned with not casting a vote for Hillary or Donald Trump. So what I about had Jill Stein? What that? What about Jill Stein or what? writing in Bernie Sanders? No, you know what, Jill Stein, uh, I would put her below Hillary. I have interviewed Jill Stein, and I'm here to tell you, mm -hmm. without equivocation, 
She's a fucking moron. <laughs> and, and let me add something. As far as the Americans with Disabilities Act, that's for a whole nother show. And if you would have listened to Alex's show where I've been on years ago, I've got a completely different view of what that should and shouldn't do. So my crippability has nothing to do with my... My crippability? <laughs> That's my, a good one. my allegiance to the Americans with Disabilities Act, and I have a lot of problems with it, too, so... Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, 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 I... Here's the thing. To begin with, I love the fact that they do go after Americans with disabilities, saying, oh, we should do something about that. What? What you want? If, if people uh, uh, have disabilities and you don't want to defer to them on certain things, is that my my thinking about this? Gee, you know, I guess people because it was such a land grab being a, a person with a, a disabled person that people were chopping their legs off just to get to be part of the program. You know, <laughs> kind of like the whole welfare. You know, like oh boy, I, I wish I were disabled like Patrick because then I could get the wheelchair and the ramps and the, you know, get on the rides first at Disney World. Hey, he gets to stare at women's asses without getting caught. <laughs> is that true, Patrick? That's exa that, it's a plus, but then the minus of that is there's a lot of stanky ass out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you get to pick what people are eating for dinner. <laughs> well, the obesity epidemic, epidemic and everything, yeah, I understand your point. Do you, do you see a lot of upskirt when you're out and about? No, I'm not that low. <laughs> so she has to be tall. Put some beers on your... Uh, no, I, I, I mean, there have been a few that have come close, but I, you know, I, I don't make it... I mean, I could wear... Like a uh, like a helmet, and then <laughs> you know, ask my to get away with it. But I I couldn't do that, you know. <laughs> do, do let me give you full screen here. Do that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it a little more, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to I'm going to make a loop out of it and put it up on yeah. the, as a gift. <laughs> If I ever run for office, you'll be running that. You'll say, here, here I'm against disabled people. Yeah, do, do that again. Do that again. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's how gimpy people act, right? <laughs> uh, kind of well, a... I think it's about time for me to leave this intellectual discussion. I, uh... <laughs> really? Hey, well, I gotta go. I gotta go off and do a show. Well, look how! Don't you wish you could go where he's going right now? Because look don't how you snappy! Wish you were me right now. Look how snappy he looks. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is how I caught Alex's eye one morning all those years ago. Yeah. Well, what I'll try to do is I'll try to find a little piece of your band playing and let people hear what it sounds like. You guys are good. Oh, thank you, Alex. You were my last I... my last ever band. Yeah. And we're kind of proud of that fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd gone through three of them. I'd gone through Dick Bright, mm -hmm. and then uh, 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 Buddy, uh, Love. Buddy Love. And then finally you hooked up with us. Yeah, finally hooked up with you guys. <laughs> yeah. And um, and all three, by the way, all three great, you know, uh, sure. because they, they played music that was fun to play with, you know. And it, not really that great for a modern rock station, but still. Oh, yeah. Like I had a modern rock show, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, exactly. They tried to see they tried to see how many records they could force me to play. Right. Yeah, you know, that was it's like if you're a Jew, they invite you over to dinner to see if they can make you eat pork. And in my case, a radio station would hire me to see if they could make me play eight records an hour. You know. <laughs> All right, I'm some, off. Okay, so bye bye, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say goodbye Booty. to Lee Press on, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. There goes Lee. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate it. Uh, move person from group. There we go. Okay. So now it's the six of us. More people call. Let's fill this up. Okay. I know it's been a little weird week this week because it's, today earlier I was saying no way I'm going on, and tonight I am on. Here I am. You seem to have a little bit uh, real energy right now. I, I seem to have some energy. It's, yeah. it, it's all show business. Well, good. It's all show yeah. business artifice, as it was. 
I was going to ask if, unlike yesterday when I was listening to the uh, show, if uh, you had progressively gotten better instead of progressively getting worse throughout the day today. Well, actually, I progressively got worse today. Uh. But if you listen to last night's show, where I was better, I was cranky. Oh, spoilers, yeah, I know. I kind of picked up on well, that. Well, well, like this guy that calls up and says he was my phot official photographer. I don't even remember the guy. And he's speaking to you in riddles. He's not giving a direct answer to any of your questions. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? And I don't want to spend... The reason I hung up on him is I didn't want to spend a half hour with him waxing poetic about things I don't even remember. But in all fairness, you don't remember Phil either. Well, in all fairness, I do remember Phil, but not as prominently as Phil would like to think I should remember him. You know... Like Fading pimple on your ass you had 40 years ago that uh, you by and large forgot about, but still have cold sweats. Well, I, apparently I knew him well enough that I fucked some woman on his bed. <laughs> you know. So, you know, but I mean. Was he Mr. Conservative then? No, he wasn't really. I wouldn't have hung with him if he had been Mr. Conservative. Now, what the fuck happened on that? Uh, he got old. He you drank know, the pool. He drank Jim Jones. Uh, there are rancid, times. There are times. And I got to and, and I, and I tell you, I don't have any evidence to the contrary. Okay, but there are times when I go, I don't think Phil's truly serious about his position. You know, oh, I, you feel that way too, right, Scott? Well, well, some people have said even on your website they the think camera. it's just a shtick he's doing to to hog the airtime. To hog the airtime. Yeah. I suggested that to Jack once a few months ago. Really? Yes, yes, Jeff. My my wife says that you pay him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you have I to pay, pay him to do it. No, I don't. Because she wouldn't let him out anyway. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? I'll tell you, I gotta tell you something. As long as he's not here, we can talk behind his back, right? Sure. Uh, listen he'll to listen this. tomorrow. But he'll listen tomorrow. I have done more in my time uh, with this show defending Phil. There are people that go, I will not listen to your show because of Phil. And, I'm, and I basically write them back and exactly. say, uh, that's not a good reason for me to get rid of them. You know, have a good time listening to something else. You know, but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to forego the freedom that this show has for people to call and to express their opinion, no matter how outrageous it is. I would never get rid of somebody for that. And you know how it goes in radio, too. Those people who are bitching about somebody, they're the ones who listen the most. I would say, yeah. yeah. So if you got rid of Phil, maybe they'd stop listening. So you can't. If I got rid of Phil, I don't, you know, I hate to say this, but he gives, he, he and Patrick bring balance to the show. Uh, and he does it in a, he does it in a more uh, hard to take fashion. Bombastic. And, yes. and bombastic and uh, out there. But nevertheless, I mean, I think he's I think he's important to the uh, to the mix. And I think you guys would would be disappointed if, if, if suddenly I said no more, no more Phil, you know. Uh, See, I don't know if you saw my I, I wrote to him. I was kind of joking around, but it was kind of serious, too, because I do. When Phil retires, he probably is going to get a show, right? No. See, I think he should. Uh, did I ever offer him a show here? I yes. don't think. Did yes. I? Yes, yes did you I? did. I did. Yeah. No. What? What? what I thought that uh, uh, if you didn't do the show tonight, that Phil should have done it. That'd be a funny what, what, you, what were you going to say, Mark? I would have to be. I had to have to say that could be interesting. Yeah, it'd be fun. Well, you know something. I got to tell you, uh, the, the downside. Let me give you the downside. Okay, the downside is it sounds like a good idea on paper. <laughs> All right. But just because you give somebody a show who has monopolized your show <laughs> uh, doesn't mean that on his own he's going to do a good show. It's a, it's, a different, it's a different kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm here being a ringmaster, more or less, and that any time it gets quiet and whatever, then I say something outrageous, right? Phil, on the other hand, doesn't, I, I don't think has the... How can I put it? I don't want to say the tenacity or whatever. That's not the word I'm looking for. You've got to be able to... The leadership. You, well, when you're doing a show like this, you have to kind of know when to shut up. You know, like you don't hear me jump in until I need to jump in. 
that I don't just suddenly say, well, this is my show and here's my opinion and blah, 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 blah. I well, see that's where it would have been fun if Phil would have done tonight, you know, if you weren't feeling well enough and Phil would have jumped in. Um, but the, the only thing that makes me think that maybe he couldn't do it is, do you remember the one night that you were, you were pissed off at the world? And you just what night on. was that? Did that ever happen? What, what yeah. night was that? Every night. You, you just you turned on you turned on Skype and you let people call in. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and Phil it's was like, ah, oh, we, we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be talking and blah blah blah. And, and of all people, it was like Dan, who was almost trying to take over and just like, oh, shut up. But um, I thought Phil should have, you know, maybe stepped up a little bit, but he didn't. Yeah, I think I just put everybody on, but I didn't yeah, say anything. You just sat back and act like you weren't there. I did that years ago on radio. You remember, Mark, when I, remember, I was at uh, WPLK, I, I think. No, I think you were talking about it when you were on Sirius. You talked about this. Yeah, I think I was at WPLJ, and one night I just, I was, I said, I, I don't like you very much tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when, and that bothered people a great deal because their radio never told them it didn't like them. You know, they would turn on the radio to get somebody who automatically loved them. You know, hi, how are you? Glad to have you here. You know. Uh, uh, remember but, Bob, Bob Grant? You, you were well, just yeah, thinking in parallel him. to him, and he was the ultimate guy about saying, "Get the hell off of my phone." Yeah, well, anyway, so I, I kind of said, "I really don't like you guys tonight." <laughs> And then I think I decided that I wasn't going to say anything, and I just pressed a button. And just people went, are you there? Hello? And then they got the idea that when the button was pushed, yeah, they were on the air. And I went from line to line to line to line and didn't say anything. Just let people say what they had to say. And then when I felt I was bored with them, I hung up on them and went to the next person. But I didn't, but I didn't say, hello, hi, I'm here. You know, that kind of crap. Yes, Jeff. Well, I remember that you used to do that Friday afternoon, the end of the week. Quickies. Thing, where Quickies. you would let people. Quickies. Quickies. Is Quickies. That what it is? Yeah. yeah. I, I wound up doing that again at, at Sirius XM. Yeah, that was great. That yeah, well, was really I, I finally decided to go back to it after years and years and years because so many people had stolen it from me that I wanted to go back and make it my own again. J- Jason. All right. Now, did you steal that from laughing? No. Ah. No, no, I didn't. It, they had a thing they called quickies, but it wasn't that. It wasn't what, what it was. They had quick little comedy clips. Well, no, but they had. They had a. They had somebody would have a catchphrase, quickies, you know. But no, I would go quickies, and then people would be have to say something in fifteen seconds or less. Then I would go to the next line, next line. It was always the way to end a show of the week. And it, sometimes it turned out to be hilarious. Oh man, it was great. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, and and so I went and did it at Sirius finally, brought it back after years and years because uh, Hannity stole it from me. Uh, Alan Combs, as much as I love him, stole it from me. Uh, a lot of people stole the concept from me. And nobody and was. Sure and, and Sirius had to have been the best because it wasn't censored. Well, nobody, also, nobody was doing it right. They were all putting a little twist on it, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, you have to. Uh, I can't remember. Alan had a slightly different twist on what, how much time it was, and you know what you had to do and whatever. And Hannity, I think it, you could go on for three minutes or something. I can't remember now how they each did it, but the way I did it, uh, that was the original, you know. And so I figured I better go back and just claim it again. And then, of course, you always get somebody going, "Well, Hannity does that." <laughs> yeah, you know. and it was great. I wish you could bring it back, but you can't. You know, in this format, you couldn't do it. Oh, this but. is constant quickies. Yeah. We're going from person to person to person to person. Or, you know, I mean, it, it 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 this format doesn't need it. You know, this format is its own existence. Uh, but uh, anyway. Uh, some other people give us a call. We'd like to fill this up a little bit more if we can. Uh, but uh, let me see here. What else? What else was in the news? Uh, was there any? There, I was thinking there was something I wanted to talk about, but I, I was I've been so out of it that I have a hard time remembering what it was. Jason. So Michigan, which I cannot believe this, <clears throat> you know, is thinking about getting rid of their. You have to get a permit to carry concealed weapon. Michigan. Yes. Hmm. Wow. 
So, you know, hey, it, it's all the criminals that have the guns and they're not following the laws. So, you know, what's the point of having laws? Because criminals are just going to break them anyway. So let's just make it easier for everybody to carry a gun. And well, yeah. that that is making me want to get a gun so I can carry it concealed because it's not really because of the criminals who are already out there. It's because these other motherfuckers who don't think they're criminals are going to be having guns now, too. And I'd be scared as fuck of them. What you're talking about is a... Uh, free-for-all. Well, it, it, not a free-for-all. I mean, to begin with, it's it's a stupid answer to an even stupider question. Um, and uh, it's I, already passed one of one house of uh, representatives. Whatever. But, Let's but go through why, that. Why anyone would think that because you could have a gun, you're any safer than if you didn't have a gun? You'd be a lot safer if we had a society where it was just de classe to carry a fucking gun. Statistics show if you carry a gun, you are 400 times more likely to be shot. I would 400 say that. times. I, 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 I don't doubt it in the least. Yes, Patrick? We have open and concealed carry in Wisconsin. But you probably have to have a permit for concealed carry. I mean, it, I'm I'm good with both of them. I have no problem with it. Well, I mean, if you had to make a law, what kind of law would you want? One one in which you've made illegal concealed weapons, or one in which you've made sidearms uh, the thing that you have to have. In other words, you can't carry a concealed weapon. It has to be strapped to your side where we can see that you've got a gun. I'd rather have concealed. Why? I, because it uh, one it. it People don't know who's carrying at that point. Yeah. Therefore, you have criminals who may think twice. And then the other thing is um, mom and dads and children and people like that, it, just in general out in public, are not going to be calling the fucking cops every time they see somebody strapped. So it it's more of a, um, a safety uh, measure that way. So I... I'm fine with either one. I mean, I've seen people with pistols um, strapped. Doesn't bother me in the least. I've got friends that carry, come into my place, whatever. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. I've never had a problem being around gun. Yeah, whatever. Well, I do, but Jason? I, say, I, I think a carry permit period, concealed or open, you should have. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, it just... It, I don't know. It, it's it's crazy to think that you shouldn't have to have a, you know, one to be able to buy a handgun, you should have a permit, but a higher permit to be able to carry that out in public, no matter what, if it's concealed or open. But me personally, I think it should be concealed because my kid doesn't need to see you carrying a fucking gun around. You know, I don't, you know, I shouldn't, he shouldn't have to go through that. Why does this guy have a gun? You know, oh, it's just okay. It's normal. You know, it, it's not. <coughs> you know, this is the only country in the world, I think, where this is a major issue. Where this this intense desire to carry a gun is sold so wonderfully true and right in the American way. And, you know, yes, Patrick. We have to be licensed to carry, period, in Wisconsin. And there's a... Um, you have to go through, I think it's 12 or 16 hours of classes. Same as the hunter safety course that I went through. However, the state of Wisconsin now is considering what I think is fucking ridiculous. It's called constitutional carry, which is you don't have to go through any classes. Anybody can just buy a weapon and carry it. That, to me, is ridiculous. Mark? Because no, see, that's the thing, proficiency. You have to prove that you can get that license. Well-regulated militia. Yeah, that people don't understand that. The gun that's yeah. done. And, and, and I'm talking well regulated about, for I'm talking about even if it's a logbook that, sh that shows that you have to maintain certain number of hours, however many days on the range, it doesn't mean that you have to be a crack shot, but like you take a proficiency every year, mm -hmm. you know, responsibility. I mean... I don't have a problem with people with guns. I've handled guns. But I have young friends down here who have, you know, it's it, it's just amazing how stupid they are around guns. 
and I'm like, you better learn some. You, you better learn something here, otherwise, you know. Yeah, well, I, 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 as you know, I'm, I'm scared to death of guns. You know, uh, I had an incident when I was younger involving guns, and it, it really, put a great fear of guns into me. Uh, I don't see the logic behind wanting to own one. I do understand the logic of people who grew up with their father as hunters and then as a bonding thing between dad and son mm. went out into the forest and killed Bambi together. All right? But I understand that. Okay, That's the only part of gun that I understand. And I only understand it if you then take the venison home and eat it for dinner. Okay, Jason. I say, but also you don't have kids. So, you know, there's that Papa Bear mentality of wanting to protect your home and have a gun. You know, and but at the same time, I have that Papa Bear mentality of wanting to protect my home and have a gun. You know, in case somebody were to come in. Do you have a gun? And, Do you have a gun in your home? Uh I have a gun, but actually it's been at my dad's house for the last, like, couple of years. Well, so you don't really have a gun. <laughs> but I have knives all over the place. Oh, okay. And he's the same... Of course he's got knives! I do, too, but they're in the steak <laughs> knife drawer. <laughs> he's Mexican here. I want to know, though, what constitutes <laughs> the knife? Look at that. Look this at is that. a knife. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that, folks. I just blew you up big on the screen so everybody could see what you look like with that thing. Yeah. That's a knife. I'll take that with my gross yeah. monster any day of the week. <laughs> oh. What constitutes constitutional carry in Wisconsin? I don't know. Is that like if uh, you know somebody's robbing you or somebody's trying to, uh, you know, bista cuffs or something, and you you defend yourself on the spot even though you don't have a permit that you're allowed? Or what what is the legal definition of that? I'm confused. Yeah. You don't need it. You don't need to get licensed. You can just ki you can just buy a weapon, which you can do anyway, like for hunting. But this gives you the ability to carry it without having a license yeah. and that to me is just ridiculous so it's just a loophole a blatant obvious in your face loophole by now by the way we've been joined by james lee in hawaii if you turn on your camera you'll be able to see your lovely and attractive property whoops there we go <laughs> hi gentlemen uh, well, where are where are you you're out of breath what what's the story here doing some work here you know, hey, it's, but it's around 5.30 in the afternoon. It's time to get out there and work the, shovel your chicken manure and all that good stuff out here. All you Leaving ever talk about. full of crap this, in there you, you, <laughs> behind you, me. You, you and Renee talk about how wonderful it is living in Hawaii. When I talk to you, all I ever hear about is you're shoveling shit or you're killing <laughs> roaches or you're, exactly. you know. I mean, it sounds like yeah. you, you, you can't keep the jungle from your door, can you? And we love it. In fact, I ought to show you some of those big snails the size of your hand. Really? Yeah, and you talk about putting a twenty-two in them, you know, the bullet goes, bounces right off the shell almost. They go, can you do anything better? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hot out here. That's why I have to have the old baseball cap and the stuff to protect the back of your neck. How hot is it today? Hurt. How hot is it today? There? Well, today's not bad. It's, it's probably in the low 80s, but the humidity is in the high high 80s right now. Oh, really? Uh, uh, yeah. if, if Renee is listening to us, who lives on the other side of your island... She yeah, should, she's getting it also. She should give us a call and tell us how she how she's weathering the uh, the heat. Yeah. Did you well, feel I don't have time there? to drink any Mai Tais or dry martinis. I'm just sucking water out here. That's all. Yeah. That's it. Who who said what? What? I, said, I was saying, did, Chief, did he feel the earthquake that Renee that, was talking about yesterday? Oh, you mean the earthquake? Yeah. Yeah, the earth, 7 o'clock in the morning. The, no, the airport is open. I mean, there's a bunch of cracks out there. It, it, it shook us out at eight, 7 o'clock in the morning. It, it was it was like a San Francisco quake, like a Loma Prieta almost felt like. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a good jolt. Wow. You, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I was looking for under a, I was looking for my crowbar. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Nothing like having the earth move beneath well, your feet. Well, well, here, here's here's a, by water. I want to bring you into this discussion, James. We're talking about guns, all right? Now, you <laughs> live there with all those critters and everything. Do you have a gun? No comment. 
That's what, all I'm going to say. Why no comment? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, gentlemen. Well, well, that means you have a gun. <laughs> I'm not saying no comment. Yeah. I'm like, is it illegal to own a firearm in the state of Hawaii or what? Negative. Negative. Are as long as you have the correct permits and registration, you're good to go. Are you former military? Yes, sir. So. I was a medic, though. You know, I had the drugs. I had the drugs, <laughs> the condoms, the prophylactics. You got to so remember, you gentlemen. All of them. Hey, you know, we weren't fighters. We were lovers. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I had a rank. They were even lovers have to defend themselves. I had a rank in the United States Navy, which was yeah, I heard about that, journalist yeah. third class. All right? Okay. And, and with journalists third class, you never hear anybody ever go, medic, medic. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we've been joined by Marcella Roberts, who we can't see because uh, she's you're on, a, on a phone, aren't you? I'm on an iPad. iPad, yeah. Oh, iPad, okay. If cool. I were using the new system of Skype, which is a little more trouble, we actually could see you because it, it allows the, mo the mobile stuff to come through. But we can see, but, you know, so when you want to say something, Marcella, just join in. What did you, did you call about something you heard? I was going to show you what Seattle looked like, but I guess that was. Uh, well, they, that, that, that's to no avail. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, uh, uh, maybe in about a month we'll be able to take calls from mobile and actually have you, see people Have you physically. tried it at all yet to see if you still have the same issues? Uh, no, I haven't, but I am sure we do. You know, uh, <laughs> maybe it, it, on the it, weekends it, try it. Well, I might. What I might do is I might actually put a call out for you people to call me, so I can test the system. But it. it I, I've done it before. If I start off every show here. That was like six months ago that you tried no, it last. No, 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 no. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago I did it because we were having trouble. And I so I, I decided to go and call Jay, call somebody, right? And I put them on. And then the next person that called, I did the same thing, hung up on them or whatever. And I, I was able to get everybody on in, in, in the new format. But um, I just don't like the fact that Skype shoves this stuff down our throats, and it, yeah. it they don't make it cross-workable. In other words, that it works the same way it used to. It's just better, you know? Instead, it, it works doesn't work like it used to, and it's worse. So, what can I say? Thing, if it's not broken, is why does give Skype us a care hammer. what system you're using? Why do they even care? Oh, but, you're happy with it. I know. Why should they care? Oh, I guess because they want everybody to be using the same system. You know, it's just it, it's bullshit. It's stupid. I agree. It's stupid. No, what you do is you What's make wrong? when you upgrade something. I mean, uh, I, to Apple is kind of guilty of this too. There are some oh, yeah. companies that don't like you to be backward compatible. Oh yeah. You know, and uh, my Especially video game my, game my feeling is you're so, you've got the best. You know mental minds when it comes to making programs or we assume that why can't you make a program that's backward compatible with the last one or the one 10 years ago you know that people can use the one 10 years ago and it'll still work it just won't have all the bells and whistles you've added to it since but yeah you know. i know why they do that <laughs> why do they do that marcella they do that because it costs money to keep um people engaged in the old product when they'd rather be spending that money on people writing new stuff uh, yeah that could be you know like we're going to throw the baby out with the bath water as of a such and such a date you're going to have to have the new program in order to you know do what, what you want to do and that's essentially exactly. what they're saying to us but the, Apple stock went down today because their new iPhone isn't going to be as fast as everybody else's smartphones well, you know, it, it wasn't the day going to come when the iPhone was going to kind of be not as good as other people were making phones. I mean, somebody was going to make a better phone. iPhones don't explode. Yeah. They don't explode. <laughs> but I find that I, I find that if you use a Samsung, you have a sense of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it isn't that you don't know it won't explode, but it's when it's going to is what the thrill of the of the game is. Yes, Jeff. There was a time when when sixty percent of the cars were produced by by Chevy in the United States. Yeah. 
nobody else knows that anymore because it didn't. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. It changed. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, 56 little... Chevy Bel Air. Yeah. yeah, there you go. By the way, I, right. I was watching, I went back and watched a documentary. I love Ken Burns' thing on Prohibition is fascinating to watch. Because it shows, you wonder how we got to a point where we actually made booze illegal in this country. Yes. And, yeah. and, and I mean, what are all the little bells and whistles that happen? Like, you know, for years, the, the prohibitionists were looked upon and laughed upon. You know, Women's Christian Temperance Union laughed at. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, Anti-Saloon Society laughed at. And then all of a sudden, one day, everybody's sitting there and there, here's prohibition. You know, 1920, January 16th, I think it was, something like that, 1920. And there are a couple of elements that were involved in getting it passed. One of which was, and this is one I didn't realize, World War I. And the hatred in this country at that point for Germans. And what kind of who made who made the product beer in this country? Germans. The Germans. And so <laughs> Americans across the country voted for prohibition to get even with the Germans. You know, it, 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 it's amazing how many little racist concept came into play in order to get prohibition passed. But it was a, it's, a, it's an amazing documentary if you ever get a chance to watch it. Also uh, the, uh, the Boston uh, Herald ran a contest uh, gave, giving away $200 to the pe person who could come up with the best term, new term, for a person who is in violation of the law by drinking alcohol. And two people won the prize because they came up with the same name out of something like 200,000 entries. And the word was, you ready? Scoff law. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. And do you know why why it was called bootleg and people who sold it were bootleggers? They used nope. to carry the booze in their boot. Yeah. This, uh, in one particular city. And so they became known as bootleggers. And there's another hmm. thing in there about in one town, there was an area where uh, the logs went to the river because they would cut the trees and they would slide them down through the streets of the city into the river and that was the part of town known as skid row mm -hmm. yeah so you watch it it's got some interesting stuff yes james uh well anyway uh, folks i'm gonna have to bail out the bugs are even getting my ears right now so i'm gonna have to spray myself with some ddt or something well, so what mr. i'm Jason, suggesting mr. Patrick, what I'm, mr. I'm, Mark, yeah. mr scott mr jeff mr uh brian and also miss marcella uh, aloha and also to you mr bennett uh -huh. we'll catch you up uh, again later you got a good signal coming in, in, in here to the islands i could see you guys but the bugs are overcoming me right now <laughs> okay go get them bye okay like hello uh, it, does, doesn't yeah. he have spray or something isn't there a spray you can put on oh yeah yeah we've got the ddt we've got all uh at real cancer good stuff remember because we're, we're we're epa uh what do you call it exempt out here oh really yeah. well everybody yeah. will be epa exempt soon yeah, because we used to be a trust territory, so many of the EPA rules never applied to Hawaii. I see. <laughs> hmm. okay. Okay. Goodbye, James. Thank you. Bye-bye. Aloha. Yeah. Thanks mm -hmm. for calling. And a huma yeah. huma nuka nuka apa wapa a uh -uh to you, too. Let me see here. <laughs> uh, let me, I want to I sign them off. How do I? Oops. No, I didn't want to do that either. Mm. Let me get everybody's picture back up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Marcella, and there's me. I'll make myself small. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Um, where were we? We were talking about um, oh guns, and then I just never been able to warm up to guns no. on any level. I just don't. I, I just don't. I don't see the need for them. I mean, they're only meant to do one thing: kill something. You know. Uh, it, yeah. Yes, Jeff. Well, uh, my uncle used to be a, a jeweler. A jeweler. Yeah. And. Uh, in the Lower East Side, and uh, he was he was getting robbed a lot. Yeah. So he finally got himself a, a gun, and it was very obvious where he had a gun and how big it was. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And you know what? The crooks didn't come see him anymore. So uh, I guess there's certain advantages to it. Well, but... 
Yeah. They also, well, the crook, did the crooks not come to see him because he had a gun? Or the crooks just not come to see him because if they wanted a gun, they knew where they could find one. No, 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 because he had a, he had, he had a jewelry store, so he had a lot of gold and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. And people would come in there to steal his stuff. Yeah. Okay, because it was a, a commodity that you could sell anywhere. Okay? Couldn't he get a dog? Uh, you no, know, I think he did it at one time, too, but... You know, people would feed the dogs. Uh, yeah, you just bring, <laughs> just bring hamburger and they're yours. That's right. Right. Or if the dog so, was trying to defend the store and they got shot by the rock. Yeah. But I mean, the biggest problem was... Guilty the, as hell. Guilty, his guilty his as store hell. was always... The door was locked. So? You couldn't get in unless you had a knock on the door and somebody would let you in. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, that's when he used to get robbed. Yeah, because I, I was mentioning... I think it was to Marjorie... Uh, yesterday or the day before that I just don't understand all the time we spend consumed with the right to carry arms. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary if you think about it. You know, it's not in proportion to all the other things in our society which are important too. It's not even in proportion with everything else that's in the Constitution that we should be fighting for. Uh, so I, I just wonder why we are so obsessed with guns that we just make it such a big issue. You know, I, do you know any other country where it's this big an issue? No, I've been to Australia. They, they don't have any guns. Yeah. They don't think about guns. Well, they got all. sick. Of, they, what they did is they got fed up with guns when that whole thing happened in the uh, uh, Lunt, Lunt candy, candy store. store. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the country, everybody got together, everybody, yeah. right, left, you know, and just said, but, we don't need these things. Yeah. I think well, in the I Middle East, where it's part of the religion, they're pretty big on guns. But here, let me give you an example. Here, we have a thing like the school massacre up in uh, Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. Which, according to Alex Jones, never happened. Yeah, but... I oh, mean, yeah. Well, it's about 20 miles from my, where I am. Yeah, right but I mean, now. that happens... And we have a very minor discussion. Nothing gets done. And yet in England, a candy store is obliterated and they make guns illegal in, 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 in carrying firearms in, uh, in Australia illegal. Yes, Brian. As far as I remember vaguely, uh, there was more than just a minor discussion made in, in lieu of, uh, of uh, uh, Sandy Hook. I, as I recall, under the Obama administration, they were trying to make a collaborative effort between Democrats and Republicans to uh, have to implement universal background checks, along with other measures. But once again, the partisan obstructionists on the GOP well, well, side. What I'm saying is that sh it. that should have been a no-brainer. Everybody should have been, said, "Kids got killed. We got to do something. To make sure that doesn't." Well, happen. even a majority of Americans agree with you, uh, myself included. Yeah. Universal background check should yeah, be implemented. Yeah. Jason, yeah. yeah, as a parent, that made me say, "Fuck guns." You want, you know, I wanted all guns gone. Right. You know, it, 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 that's that makes, ridiculous. That's not, well, because you, as a parent, put yourself uh, in that it, school. The thought of my kid fucking being killed in school. Yeah, it, I've got a nephew in first grade, and I've got a nephew who's uh, even younger than that one. So, yeah, I can understand the sentiment. But on you know, emotional level. All due respect, a nephew, you can't. You know, I love my nieces. I have some nieces, but when it's your own fucking kid, man, you well, know, it's a little different. Marcella, what do you think? I, I mm -hmm. want to bring her into this because I know that she can't see me. I can't see her raise her hand if she does mm -hmm. want to talk. What do you think? Sure. I think that um, they, they know, we know that kids are more likely to be shot in a friend's house where there's a gun at the friend's house than they are at any other kind of incident. Irresponsible um, owners. Well, I, I think the amount of kids are in this country who are killed as a matter of just being able to know where the gun was in the house or to find it or happen upon it and then be playing with it and because they see on TV that you can shoot somebody, you know... That that, that that that's a very common incident. It's more, like, more common than a mass shooting, but I don't think that mentally ill people should be able to carry guns. No. Well, then of course you're you're excluding Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say that would take all of us up. Gee, I'm glad I can have them tested. (laughs) There's like 400 people are killed every year in America by toddlers. Jesus Christ. How many? 400. Are killed by toddlers? By toddlers. Every year. And by the way, you want to know the other victim in that? The toddler himself. Yes. He has to to live with that the rest of your life to know you killed somebody. Yeah. Uh, that's that's nuts. It's usually their brother who does it. it, it, it was, it's usually a, a, a brother or a sister. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, all I'm saying is, it, uh, why is this? Uh, why is this a big issue for discussion? There are so many other things we have to do in this country, and the one thing we always come back to is right to bear arms. I want my right to bear arms. It's not the end of the fucking world, pal. You know, I'd say you're, I'd say you're, I'd militia. say your your right of free speech is probably more important than your right to carry a gun, and yet you will not fight as hard for free speech as you will for a gun. Especially if the free speech that's being made is in opposition to your ideals <laughs> and, to, and the guns. Uh, yes, Jeff, you have your hand up. Well, I th- I think a lot of kids learn about this when they're in the second grade. Yeah, and all of a sudden they go, oh. We have a special rule about guns. Yeah. We're allowed to have them. That, that. Tim's trying to call again. Hold on a second, folks. Tim's trying to call again tonight, and unfortunately, uh, I can't ever get him on. He's doing something wrong out there, and so I don't understand exactly why why this happens. But you know, I have to say, uh, Tim, I'm sorry. You know, but let me see. Well, I could try to call Tim, but what will happen is. I'll then get a machine answering it because he's doing it from a phone. Do you have 10 people right now? No, no I only have uh, I have uh, seven, eight with me. Tim, I'm, I'm going to try. I, I can't do it, Tim. Hold on a second, everybody. I just want to talk to Tim for a second. Uh, hello, Tim. Tim, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Tim, I'm sorry, I'm but you, for some reason, I can never get you to connect. There's something you're doing wrong there. I'm just dialing a regular number like I used to. Yeah, well, that's what you should do. Okay, yep, do good. that. Do that. Okay, and let me get back to the, the, everybody else. Where are they? Where are they? Wait a minute. What happened to everybody? Are they here? I, I go. Up, oh, there we go. Okay, and let me resume call. He's going to call using the phone number. So, hi everybody. Hi. You back there again, all of you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, no, but anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying, why is this such a big deal? You know, I mean, we have so many other things to talk about. Now, let me see. Add to group. Will that work? No. There's something wrong. Oh, God. Let me just answer it again. Uh, listen, uh, that's not working either, Tim. That's not working either. So hang up, and I'm going to try and ring you back, okay? Okay, that's fine. Okay, Thank you very much. okay. Bye-bye. Uh, I, I don't know what his problem is, but I'm going to add the group call, and then I'm going to resume this call, and I've added him to the group call. Let's see, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not happening. It's not happening. Well, let me let me try one more time here. Add to group call. Uh, nothing. There is something wrong with the way that Tim is calling this program. Maybe, Maybe it has to do with the sure. version of Skype. They've no, he's not using Skype. He was just calling oh. the number. But it's always just Tim who has That's a problem. Saying, maybe I'll have to drive up to him and show him how to use Skype. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About half an hour away from me, yeah. I think. Uh, Tim, there's a problem. There's a problem because I can't even bring you on. you just adding you to the group. So I'm just saying on Skype, then maybe because they're moved, they're such a go so gung ho on moving on to newer, fresher versions that they're like dropping the support thing. Well, here, here, here here's the Facebook problem. Phones. Mark, you still awake? I just want to make yeah. sure you're okay. Uh, <laughs> no, not like last time where I think I fell asleep. Yeah, you did, but that's <laughs> that's fine. I, you know, I, I like the fact no, no, that... No, 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 that's what happens when you work nights. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. But, but I also like it because it means you're comfortable with us. Oh, gee. You know, it's just I'm, I'm afraid that when we end the show and you're still asleep and then uh, you wake up like about 1230 and you go, right oh, what the fuck happened here? No, that's yeah. pretty much what happened. And there's, like, and there's oh, drool oh. on your computer screen, and it's, you know. By the way, Scott, your camera isn't on. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It went oh, off it in the off. process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, guess 
using yeah. bandwidth on my other computer. Yeah. There it goes. Uh, by the way, here's the thing, though. And, and Mark, I've, I put this challenge out to people yesterday as well. Uh, try and get a hold of Skype. It's impossible. Try and get a hold of most tech companies. No, but I mean, this is particularly egregious. This is like where they even say, hey, go here, and then you can talk to somebody via text, and then it doesn't give you the option. you got to find out where their campus is. L and Luxembourg. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. That could be their corporate office. There's, a, You know how Luxembourg is home to a lot of corporations, but where their work is really done, either if it's in Redmond or, who knows, Israel. Yeah, I'm That's in Redmond. I, like. I haven't seen one. I haven't seen a building with Skype on it. Yeah. I mean, there might be one, but I have not seen one. Yeah. I mean, and, by the way, Scott's still whirling around. I don't know what happened. Oh, Scott. I turned it on. I can see him. Oh, I see him. Uh, you see him, but I don't see him. Well, there, it, it, it's okay, it's Scott. It. I'll click it again. No. It's okay, Scott. I have a theory on Skype. If you Skype. let it just keep... Yes. What, Brian? I have a theory on how to get a hold of Skype. I figure that if you, if you're somehow and miraculously able to find Waldo, fingering, Punky Brewster, yeah, you might find Skype, Skype's headquarters in the background. Yeah, it could be, could very well be. Uh, oh, there's something I cannot <laughs> see here in my mind. What's a Punky Whoa. Brewster? Whoa, Punky Brewster, what? A Punky Brewster. You don't know who she is? Didn't she grow up and have big tits? Yes, yes, I must. I must. I must increase my bust. No, but no, <laughs> no, no, Brewster thing. No, but I Google I, that right now. Punky Brewster. I'll bet you will. <laughs> no, but the actress who played Punky Brewster. Am I not right that she grew up and had the world's biggest breast and had to have now, a breast uh, reduction? She had a reduction, but not the world's biggest. Well, I mean, now not the world's biggest. You know. It was a hyperbolic statement, but I understood what you mean. It, 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 I just know the name because my sister was well into her when we were uh, younger. Really? Yeah, but Scott's just whirling around now. I can see him. You can see him. Everybody yep. else can see him but me. Again, if I could get a hold of Skype and ask yeah. them why. It's just your broadband sucks. My broadband doesn't suck. My download's <laughs> 300 BPS or megabytes per second. It's Skype because I can see sometimes he can see people. Other people, other of you guys can see other people that I can as well and vice versa with everyone else. Yeah. But see, once we get rid of net neutrality yeah. and let people say, this is the service I am providing and have quality of service services over all of the providers, Skype will work better. You think? You think? Yes. According to San Jick Dick Pie, yes. Hey, San Jick Dick Pie is that? Or Hair Pie, or whatever. <laughs> Agit Pie, I believe, is how you pronounce his name correctly. I like that name. So give me, the, give me uh, the name again. Young me, Turks. Uh, San Jick Dick Pie. Yeah. San Jick. Creamy, uh, creamy, rancid, hairy pie. I don't know how. Do yeah. You know some young guy? He is a he he is a dot Indian, not a casino Indian. Oh, we, we, we used to say uh, Mumbai or Woo Woo, <laughs> but that was a little more racist. I'm actually you quoting, uh, that's, not my, that's not my turn of phrase. I'm actually coining a phrase that was uh, popularized on the late podcast from the Ville. Uh -huh. Yes, it's Jason. Up, it's pretty funny. As a Native American, it's all fucking racist. Your best it, is it really? Are we being racist? Uh, Are we being horrible? Are we being terrible? As they realize, well, but, but, but my my tribe of Native Americans is south of your American border, so I'm not a Native American. And as a as a as a self touted realist uh, person, the from the moment you're born and move and breathe, you're going to piss somebody off. No, no, the so minute fuck them. no, the minute you were born to breathe, <laughs> you wanted to piss people off. Well, there's that too, but uh, that's aside the point. Yeah, I mean, you you are, and I say this with great reverence and, and and great humble appreciation, are one of the most agitated human beings I know. I just don't give a fuck anymore. That's right. That's what I'm saying. And I've come to that realization at an earlier age than most people have. And you, Wait, even, Brian, you got a haircut recently, right? That's that nice. Correct. 
Well, very and, nice. But Brian also has the voice that goes along with that snarkyism. And what voice is that? It, the one you're using right now. <laughs> boom, boom, shit, pipe. <laughs> and, and and also, who's also good when he wants to be? There are a couple of people here are the good have good snarky voices too. Mm. Scott has a good snarky voice. Oh yeah. Mm. Say something, Scott. We can't. I can't see you, but say something. Now you're forcing him to. It might not come out as well. Are you there, Scott? He's hiding. Maybe he's not even there anymore. Uh, uh, said- and, and and Patrick. Patrick always, because of the way he speaks, he cuts through with every word he says. And now he's just smiling and not saying a word. That's what I try to do. I try to be concise and, and make my point. Yes, and, and good points you make. Some of them I don't agree with. Although I don't know that I, you and I have never gotten into that much of a fight over politics. You know, no. like Phil and I, I tell Phil, shut the fuck up, you know. But I don't think I've ever told you to shut the fuck up. No, not, not that I can recall, no. Yeah. And, and in spite of the fact that our politics are in two entirely different places, I appreciate your point of view. Well, and, and that comes from mutual appreciation for being able to express it without being bandied about and, and stamped out. You know, I mean, God knows not- we have enough of that on AM radio and other talk stations well, see, I, across the country. What people say, Listen to me and only me. Fuck people say you. to me, well, you know, you run a, you run a talk show there uh uh do you um uh uh, uh what 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 poli- what kind of politics are you and i said whatever hap- oh there you are scott whatever you happen to be, i happen to be at the moment you know i said because we have a whole bunch of people and they all have a whole raft of opinions and they go well how does that work i mean you don't have like a conservative running the show and i said no they have a leftist running the show but it's not a leftist show and they don't understand that concept Yes, Jason. Hey, so I was looking into getting you a job on the radio. Oh, really? Yeah. How are you with traffic on the eights? Uh, I'm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the Ask problem. Me that question. Well, here's the problem I have with that. Uh, I've always disagreed with that broadcasting philosophy. And I will only do traffic on the nines. <laughs> <laughs> Nine? That's the German in you, huh? They <laughs> wouldn't even hire me to do traffic, okay? <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm sure you could get a job on AM radio doing traffic on the eights or nines or twos or whatever nah, you wanted nah, to do. Nah, all those people are the most underpaid people in radio. I bet they are. Yeah, they no, they really are. They're getting like the the, the three ninety five an hour. But you could do it from a Centrex line from your apartment. Yeah, but that means I'd have to get up early. You know, and I'd have to pay attention to the traffic. To, uh, I'd have to go outside and look at it, Patrick. Yeah, fuck that traffic. Um, it, just as as you were saying, you've never told me to shut the fuck up. It reminded me that. Prior to when I started listening to your show, I called into one of the conservative shows in Milwaukee and had the same point of view as the host. I just phrased it a little differently, and he yelled at me and hung up on me. Oh, really? And I never got that with you. For in many years that I've called and talked to you, you've never told me to, to shut up or, you know, I mean, you may have disagreed with me, but... I found it hilarious that somebody who agreed with me, but I phrased it differently, hung up on me. I well, mean, Patrick, Patrick, yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, but here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, I when I got somebody like you calling, I went, "Thank God, I've got I've got a conservative on this show. It makes it more interesting." And I don't know what the mentality is in this business where if you're a conservative and a left winger calls, you feel bad about that. You don't want the guy on your show. What? You don't know how to defend your opinion? You don't know how to make a good, interesting show? It's great when you can have a good conversation with the person, you know? That's why I like what the citizen panel is, because it just is blatant conversation, you know? And that's why I hope I can keep it going with this new thing happening. But it's, 
you know, I'm, I, I've sent, for instance, Jack a complete memo on how to do it. <laughs> and beyond that, I'm not going to do anything about it. You know, uh, because many, because I I how many, decades, I, I, wait a minute, huh? how many decades has Jack been working in radio where he's around technology? He, he sure sent to Amy. I, I got to tell you, yeah. and I love Jack. You know, Jack's one of my, is my oldest friend. Yeah. I have to say that. Uh, Jack uh, has been in this business almost as long as I have, and it is amazing how much technology he hasn't learned. Zero. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, I'm surprised he knows how to turn on a microphone, you know, because he is so bamboozled by all the technology. And uh, once, and he'll, he'll, he'll go along with this, he doesn't, won't argue, I'm not saying anything out of school, in trying to teach him how to do this, he was completely bamboozled. He couldn't understand it. And the process is basically you uh, turn on the, uh, turn off the, uh, or either you, uh, at the end of the show, you go back here using uh, uh, log me in, and you go to the uh, the server, and you uh, turn on the encoder, and then you turn on one of the the t first thing on the playlist, right? He f couldn't get that to save his life, so one day I I finally solved it after all my frustration in trying to teach him. I said, the encoder is the transmitter. The playlist is the show now what do you have to do to start broadcasting you have to switch on the the trans as soon as i gave him that insight he had no problem with it you know so with this thing i'll have to find the same key but right now i'm too sick to do that although i'm feeling a little better i think the pills are kicking in uh marcella any last things you want to say out of seattle Yeah, uh, thank you. Same. Yeah, I wish we could see you. You have such a cheery disposition. Do you have Do you have a Do you have a desktop computer at all? I have a desktop, but it doesn't have a um, camera. Uh, camera. But yeah. I might have a camera somewhere. Yeah, in my cell. Yeah. Where do you work? <laughs> <laughs> where, do, where do I work? No. What What do you? No, he said, "What are you wearing?" What am I wearing? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm wearing pants and a shirt. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> So we don't need the fucking camera. <laughs> you know, it's in all the time we've been doing this citizen panel, nobody has ever shown up naked. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 Scott, Scott. <laughs> oh, I was thinking every, one night, all of us just taking our shirts off and saying we're doing the show naked. What, yeah, that's the show I watch, what is that? What is that noise? That's, I'm sorry. My dog has a toy. That's what I thought it sounded like a dog that's toy. A, yeah. 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 Uh, what kind of dog is it? He's a little terrier. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, terrier. Oh, I got Yorkies. So what? go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> See? Hey, that, that's shit. the Brian we know and love. <laughs> I've got a Rottweiler. Fuck you. See, Rottweiler. Oh, I'm going to mute. Uh, that's okay, Marcella. I, I, it's, it, we only have about uh, until I start playing the, the theme song. We only got about. It's 20 okay, seconds. Marcella. As long as it's a tight shirt, you don't have to mute. <laughs> <laughs> My husband says hello too. His name's Phil. Hey, Phil. How are you, Phil? Uh, hey, anyway. Alex. I'm great. I used to work with you at the Quake. Did you really? What did yeah, you? Yeah, I was that skinny intern kid with the glasses. Do you remember me? Probably not. <laughs> Yeah, and, and don't don't feel bad, uh, Phil, because you know I was so obsessed with myself that I didn't have time to think about anybody around me. Yeah, what's changed? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Phil, and thanks for letting Marcella call as well. Uh, She's the best. Thanks to Jason, thanks to Mark, thanks to Scott, thanks to Jeff, thanks to. Sp uh, <laughs> uh, That's uh, all, folks. Uh, Tessic eleven thirty eight. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, thanks, Brian. Uh, and I, I, by the way, I think the pills are kicking in a little bit. I'm feeling a little better. Let's see if I can post stuff tonight. Anyway, hey, listen, it's been great having you all here. And also, uh, uh, Lee Preson, got to mention, and also from Hawaii, uh, huh? Lee. 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 Uh, so. Yeah, I read his bio, pieces of his bio. He plays swing music. I'd like to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, thanks everybody for uh, for a wonderful night, and uh, hopefully we'll do this again uh, next week.
Wave goodbye. Yeah. Adios. That's Adios. great. Enjoy the weekend. That's great television. Bye. I <laughs> okay, do. let me turn everybody <laughs> off here so that the next show can use the Skype uh, uh, without uh, without problems. Okay. All right. There we go. And I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. That's it for the ramble for this week. There have only been like uh, two programs with me on it this week. So we're probably not going to post like a new flashback weekend this week. We'll just put last week's on. And uh, if things get up a little late tonight or maybe don't get up till tomorrow on the uh, on demand stuff, that's also because I'm you know, still not feeling well. I am feeling better for some reason. I started taking these pills earlier tonight. And I'm starting to feel a little, little more lucid. Anyway, I want to thank you for joining us and remind you that uh, we'll see you again next time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, stay tuned for The Intersection, which is next, followed by Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. And if you see her, well, you saw her earlier, but if you see her again, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.